So, hi everyone. So, I'm Sven Solo. You can find me on here on Twitter if you want to have a chat or just follow me on Twitter. I'm one of the core maintainers of Babel, which is the logo on your left side. I'm also a part of the TT59 community, which is the logo on the middle. And my talk won't be about diversity. My talk is about JavaScript. We need to understand the differences to be able to accept what JavaScript offers, right? I can see a lot of people like complaining about JavaScript, saying that this thing shouldn't work this way because it's unexpected and this kind of stuff. So I will go through some of them, trying to explain you um, why, referring to the actual specification. And I will try to make you understand that everything is fine, everything is specified, nothing is unexpected. I also forget to mention that I have some Babel stickers left. Just find me. You can also find Sarah, which is, I would recommend you finding Sarah. <laughs> so there is this very good talk from uh, Jerry, which is talking about the unexpected things in JavaScript. So I will try to build on top of that and uh, show you some unexpected things and uh, show you the spec as well. So let's go. I have this first question. I would like you to raise your hand. Um, I'll just explain you maybe just a bit. So you have a switch statement where you have a constant zero. Then you have a case with zero. So obviously, it's going to match this case. And you have a function call. And then you have another case where you have a function declaration. And please raise your hand if you think it's the first answer. Foo. Please raise your hand if you think this is the second answer. So I can actually try it live. So I have the code on the left side. Oh, damn it. Anyway, I have the, my terminal on the right side. And I can just <laughs> execute it, right? And it locks through. Well. The reason, about, the reason for that is that the, maybe a bit surprisingly, but the case bodies are just a list of statements. They are not creating a new scope, which means that the function you have here, it is going to be hoisted within the switch statement. So basically, it's like you have it there. And then when you enter this case, the A, function A, is defined. So you just call it. It's fine. Everything is fine. OK, next question. Oh, sorry. I, you can fix this issue by just putting curly braces around the case. So you are basically enforcing a new scope. I will recommend doing that to avoid this kind of mistakes. Second question. So I have a couple of characters, like a new line, a tabulation, a carriage return. What do you think will be the output of this? The output is true. So what does, that means that the tabulation, uh, new line, etc., is being expanded to an empty string. And in JavaScript, an empty string is falsy. So this is false. So this is true. Uh, next question. So that's a common source of confusion, of confusion for people. Do you think that none is, equals to, is equal to itself? Could you please raise your hand who thinks that none equals itself? Oh, damn it. <laughs> OK. So if you look at this from a very mathematical standpoint, you cannot compare values that are not even representable as number because they are a number anymore. And in JavaScript, you can get those by just having an unpresentable number or a broken value or stuff like that. And it even says in the specification that the comparison algorithm uh, says that if you have one of both sides being none, the result is automatically being none, because there's no way to actually compare them. So that's why. Next question. So here. I'm saying that 2 power 53 is equal, plus 1, sorry, 
is equal to 2 power 53. Please, okay, no, it's fine. Do you think, please raise your hand who thinks that this is true. That makes no sense. <laughs> but it's true. The reason is that in JavaScript, every number is actually a 64-bit floating point. And in those floating points, you have 53 bits of actual value. So the 2 power 53 bits is actually the most, the maximum safe integer that you can represent in JavaScript. So that, that makes sense now. We can, this is true. OK. Um, so this is pretty useful, um, I mean, maybe. And this is actually true. So in the comparison algorithm, so um, JavaScript usually want to compare things of the same type. And here we have an array, which is an object, and you have a, a string, which is a string. And JavaScript has to change the array to be a string to be actually comparable to another string. So here we are calling basically two string on the array. So that's why it works this way. OK. Now, so I put an HTML comment into my JavaScript file. What do you think will be the output of that? I will run it. So I have it. <laughs> okay. Um, so the output is actually nothing. And the reason for that is that, surprisingly, JavaScript supports HTML comments. And they support it in a way, I mean, they are still comments in JavaScript. And they needed to support it because Netscape 1 wanted to do a certain behavior to avoid executing script tags. I mean, yeah, maybe. But the point is that you can still use it today. Nobody has removed it yet. It's still there. Um, while I was doing this presentation, I was curious. I run it in Babel, and we actually pa don't pass it. So in the case of, I don't know, you relying on it, and if someone cares, there is an open issue that you can fix now. <laughs> okay. So please raise your hand if you think the output will be 1. Or at least not, 0 is not a function, because it's not. Please raise your hand if you think it's the first answer. Oh, come on. <laughs> so I'll execute it. Uh, so actually, 0 is not a function. And the reason is that, so you have this, uh, automatic semicolon insertion thing, where in that case, it will be passed as one line, and then it will be passed as one function call. And in order to avoid that, you need to put explicitly a command here, a semicolon here, sorry, and I will recommend you using semicolons to avoid this kind of case. And to avoid this kind of mistake, I personally use this kind of code. <laughs> and I will prove that it actually runs. It runs. Everything is fine. So I understand that this is maybe not clear enough to you. So we can add a few comments to it. <laughs> and it still runs. You can use it. OK. So now, so first you need to, so the curly braces are blocking, uh, forming blocks. So here we have a blockchain. It's <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, the Bitcoin one. So 
Please raise your hand if you think that this is mining bitcoins in JavaScript. Okay, yeah, let's try. I mean, it doesn't do anything because there's nothing to do. So, technically, the Bitcoin here and the first curly braces are forming what we call a labeled statements. statement. Usually, we don't use it. And then the rest is just blocks. You can just chain block. And so you have your blockchain, right? OK, so this is my conclusion. Like everything you saw in my presentation was actually specified and I guess well understandable. Uh, my other conclusion is don't let me commit on your project. Otherwise, you will have blockchains and semicolons. <laughs> so that's it. Thanks.